Uh, hi, so this is part two of a two-part uh, series on sort of scan cleanup and scan to asset processing in Unreal Engine 5.0 Early Access. So uh, in the first part, I went from this raw scan, this is a raw 2 million triangle scan from uh, Reality Capture, same kind of thing you might get, get out of Meshroom or other uh, photogrammetry tools, and I kind of cleaned it up. You see, I got rid of all these extra parts in the base. It's capped on the bottom. We filled some little holes. We cleaned up, uh, you know, some little extra bits. Uh, we did a little bit of sculpting. I showed how to do some of those cleanups. Uh, and we did some things like recomputing normals and stuff like that. So in this part now, I'm going to take this um, sort of high poly. So this is still the high poly. It was basically just a processed version of the original that was about 2 million triangles. Uh, and I'm going to turn it into uh, a low poly LOD, like for usage in a traditional LOD pipeline. Um, and so we're going to make a lower resolution version of the mesh. We're going to bake normal maps and transfer the texture. Um, so uh, yeah, let's let's get into that. So uh, I would just jump to my other folder here that I was working on in the first part of this video. So this is the mesh I was working on. I guess we can drop it on the ground. Uh, you hit end, you can drop things down to the ground if you didn't know that. It's a little hockey. Uh, okay, so um, I want to make a LOD out of this. So, you know, the standard process is like run a mesh simplification and you get a lower poly LOD. So there's a couple of problems with that. So I'm going to turn on modeling mode, which if you didn't watch the first part, uh, I showed how to get modeling mode if you don't have it, which is that you go to editor or edit plugins and type modeling and that's modeling tools editor mode editor mode you turn it on and then you restart your editor and then you'll have this activate modeling mode and you get all these tools over here and those are the tools we're going to use uh, in this video okay so uh, like I showed in part one if we run the inspector on this so this is a, like a mesh viewer um, I, the defaults had it with the wireframe which is super dense we turn that off there's no boundary edges but if we turn on UV seams see the crazy number of seams. So the problem now, if we try to simplify this down to like 2,000 or 5,000 triangles is, first of all, you can't, the, those, those UV seams map to different places in the texture space. And so we can't just arbitrarily get rid of those. They, they kind of have to stay where they are. And so that's a real problem for simplifying high-res photogrammetry meshes like this, is that you just, it just, the simplifier can't, collapse away all this stuff and keep the texture looking okay. So if we want to go down from here, we're going to have to make a new mesh and then we have to bake this high resolution normals and and uh, texture map onto this new low res mesh. Uh, so we have uh, various tools to go about that. The one I always start with is Vox Wrap. So Vox Wrap basically is going to kind of voxelize it's not actually voxelizing it. Um, it's doing something called a fast mesh winding number, which is a way to kind of tell inside and outside. And then it uh, it does something like voxelization. It's sort of like an SDF, if you're familiar with that, but it's not actually a, an SDF. It's something a bit different. It's more reliable. It works with, if you've got holes and stuff like that, uh, I'll do another video about it sometime. But that's just what we're going to use here. Okay, so this is too low res, I think, to capture the details. I'm going to turn this up to 256. All these expensive things compute in the background. When you see these blue lines like this, it's kind of like a progress bar. We, we don't actually know the progress, but it's kind of shows you it's working. Um, so now you see I'm getting a lot of the detail back uh, in this mesh. Um, if we turn on a wireframe mode, uh, we could see that it's very regular like you see often. So this is a sort of standard way you, you, you mesh an SDF. Um, there's not really a lot of options here that would have any effect. Um, I'm going to even go a bit higher than this. Uh, I'm not going to go to 512, but maybe like 350. I tend to go in like powers of two because because we just do that in graphics. Um, but um, yeah, maybe that's okay. So we're actually the next step, we're going to wipe out all this detail. So it doesn't really matter. Okay, so just before I click accept here, I'm going to just point out some options. So first of all, this is going to make a new asset. So before we were just editing existing asset, we're going to make a new asset. So we don't want to replace our source one because we need its texture and its normals and stuff. So down here we have these output options. So we're going to make a new asset on accept. So 
that's what it's going to do with the old one. It's going to delete it. It's not going to delete the asset. It'll just delete the actor from the scene, but I don't want that to happen either. So I'm going to keep that source one. Um, and the other critical thing is where it's going to go. So this new asset location for you, it's probably set to auto gen folder world relative. And what that's going to do is going to put it relative to whatever level I'm working on, which if you're working in the context of a game project, that's a good thing to do, but you can also use current folder. Uh, the main issue with that is if you're working in a plugin, a content plugin, and you save things in the main level and reference them in the content plugin, but we're, that's not an issue for us here. So we're going to use current folders. It's going to appear here in my content browser where I'm working on other stuff. Okay, so I'm going to click accept on this. Um, so this is still making quite a high res mesh. Uh, Let's see what came out here. Still 400,000 triangles, but it's already a lot lower. Uh, I'm going to need a material. I'm going to put this M bottom I made on last time. It, look, it looks not bad. Um, so you see we lost some of the details, um, but it's got quite a bit. You know, depending on what you were using this for, um, you know, this might be a passable resolution and all this baking I'm going to do and all the next steps you could do on a high resolution mesh like this. Um, or like medium resolution now, I guess, with Nanite. This isn't really high resolution anymore. But uh, you could do it on this. And this is a way to kind of like turn assemblies of assets into single asset um, to use with Nanite. But I'm not going to kind of demonstrate that process right now. What we're going to do is we're going to try and go, go low in this video. Okay, so the next step here is... Um, come on, go away. Uh, <laughs> really wants to show me those things, um, is I'm going to use uh, another voxel -y type tool, which is Vox Morph. Now, I could have actually done Vox Morph on this original model because it's completely closed uh, and solid. And so if I've done that, I don't actually have to do Vox Wrap. But I did because Vox Wrap uh, is reliable. If there's like self-intersections and things like that, it can confuse Vox Morph. Um, so vo what Vox Morph, Morph here stands for morphology, which is a mathematical word that means like growing growing and shrinking. So the default here is dilate, which is like an offset. So if I set this, because my model's really big, I got to use kind of big, big numbers here. So I set this like 25. You see, it's going to get all bubbly, right? It's basically just growing outwards, um, which doesn't, that's no good here. I don't want to get, I don't want it to get bubbly. So what I'm going to do is change this to close. So this it's called topological closure. And what it basically does is it goes out like this and then it goes back in. And <clears throat> you're gonna see that what that tends to do is it tends to kind of fill in the little crevices and holes. Um, so like you see down here, we had actually on our scan, we had some little tiny holes and things like that. And so the morphology tool um, with in closure mode will basically fill that kind of stuff in without losing the detail so much. So back here, actually, this is one part on this scan that's a little bit troublesome and um, it's got a lot of parts in here. I'm going to show you a little bit what to do about that after. But so I can go even higher up here. Now let's see, what, what do we go to 50? The one thing the morphology will do is it will tend to round off in um, like inner corners like this. I mean, that's what it's doing everywhere, kind of. And it's good in some spots. In other spots, maybe not so good. Um, so you can see that might be a, a bit much. Um, but it does fill in a lot of these sort of parts back here, which is good. Um, and once we simplify, we're going to simplify low enough that we're not going to have that detail anyway. So I think I'm going to go with this. So now, uh, again, I have the same output options here. I could make a new asset. Um, I don't really... One thing that's kind of uh, can be kind of annoying is that you can kind of end up accumulating temporary assets. So you, you can also say first or last input here. There was just one input, so they're the same. <clears throat> so I'm going to replace that uh, other one I had there. Okay, so now is, this is our new uh, surface that we're working from. So now we've Basically, like we've kind of wiped out a lot of that detail, but we were going to wipe it out anyway by simplifying. But by getting rid of it before we try and simplify, that makes the job of the simplifier easier to preserve what's important. Otherwise, it's got to try and preserve all these little details, which it just won't be able to if we say like, oh, we're going to use 2,000 triangles 
it's just too much and it ends up getting worse results than if we start with a, a smoother mesh like this. Um, I might have gone too far. We'll see what happens when we bake the normals. There might be a little bit of weirdness back here. So, um, you know, one thing you can can also do at this point uh, is you might, and you might want to come back later. Um, you know, I'm not going to do any kind of iteration here, but if you really uh, want to get really good results, sometimes you might need to come back and like do a bit of cleanup on this before you make your low poly out of it. So I mentioned last time we have sculpting tools. So we've got Vertex Sculpt, um, which, you know, is a really fast, you can just push things around really quick, smooth things out. You know, we could probably make this even smoother in some places and maybe get a better uh, normal map out of it than if it's got this detail. But you might not know that until you go to the low poly. The other thing, the other sculpting tool we have is D-Sculpt. So one problem with the V-Sculpt is it can only go so far. So like, it won't be able to smooth away all this interior here. It'll smooth it, but it won't disappear it. Uh, Desculpt can disappear it. So Desculpt, um, if you watch while I'm doing this, it actually adds triangles and removes them. So you can do, I mean, you can do fun stuff, but we're not here to do fun stuff. We're here to make, we're here to process meshes. Um, so uh, you can also do the smoothing with Desculpt and you have to check this box here, this preserve tri density. If you, if you have that checked, then the smooth and desculpt is the same as V sculpt. So that's vertex sculpt and dynamic sculpt. That's the two names. Why they're V and D. Uh, if you uncheck that, then you can actually smooth away detail like this. Um, and I don't know if you can see it, but what's happening is that the this sphere is kind of annoying, but the triangles are actually disappearing. They're kind of collapsing into each other. If we crank this up really high, it'll happen really quick. Um, and so if you have detail that, you know, in areas that you really want to get rid of or that's causing a problem in baking later, like I might want to, you know, come in and smooth out these divots and stuff like that. Um, Desculpt is a good way to do it. I'm not actually not, I'm going to just cancel all that. Um, but uh, so those are the two main tools you can use to clean up something like this. One other thing you might do is you might do a remesh. Um, remesh is down here in the mesh ops. Um, so this is not quite like simplify. Oh, we gotta turn off the wireframe again. Um, but it what it does is it kind of regularizes the triangles and that can help with other kinds of operations like the desculpt I was just doing. It works okay um, on these output of the um, Vox Ops, but they tend to have kind of funny shaped triangles. Um, so that's just something to know. You can do the remesh, but we don't really care about that because we're just going to go right to Simplify now. Um, so that's the Simplify tool there. Um, same thing, turn off. Well, oh, okay, yeah. So first of all, it's going to simplify a percentage. I don't want a percentage. I want to switch this to triangle count. 1,000 triangles is not very much, but it's, you see, it's going to get us there pretty quick. That's clear, clearly too low. That's you know, not enough for this shape. Um, I mean, you could do it uh, and it'll actually look okay, but I'm gonna go a bit higher. So I'm gonna maybe make this 5,000. And let me turn off wireframe here now. Um, and you can actually change this. There's, so there's two, there's multiple different simplifiers here. There's QEM, uh, normal aware tends to, tends to be better. We default to QEM, it's the fastest. Uh, normal aware tends to be better though. If uh, we would have to kind of toggle back and forth, but it tended to preserve the shapes better. Uh, UE4 standard, that's the one simplifier that the law generation uses. It's, it's often does even better, but it's also can be quite a bit slower. So if you're on a 400,000 triangle mesh like this, it's going to take some time I don't want to wait for. So I'm going to go with this one. And I, like I said before, as you see, like those rounded off areas tend to kind of get simplified away. Um, so I'm just going to accept that. I'm going to say 5,000 triangles. That's our low poly in this case. Uh, okay. So now the next thing I want to do here, um, I don't have to do this uh, and maybe I shouldn't even, but you can, you can get some hard normals back here. Um, so if you change this from per vertex to 
uh, face normal threshold, you know, you can drag this up and down and play with it a little. We don't have a tool where you can go in and select individual edges to harden them. But, um, you know, for something like this, this can like, do an okay job of like adding in some some detail. Once we bake the normal map, you won't really see that stuff. So actually, maybe I'm just going to skip it for now. Um, but if you, it, it does have an effect on the shading and things like that. Um, and you might want to play with that before you do these next steps. Okay, so now we need, so to, to bake, we need UVs, right? We we don't have any UVs on this. We've, we've voxelized it. All that stuff's gone. So now we have to use our UV tools. Our UV tool set's a little bit um, basic right now. It has kind of what you need to do this workflow, but it's a little bit, we're going to jump around between tools here. Um, so the, the basic tool that does everything is auto UV. So auto UV, I mean, I, it, do, it won't show anything right away. You have just right away, come over here and change this to checkerboard uh, and you'll be able to see the UVs, right? There's no texture on here. So the UVs won't be visible until you show them somehow. So this does an okay job actually, but, um, one thing you can find often is it's kind of like uh, sheared the UVs. Uh, it's kind of happened down here where they get kind of stretched out in funny ways. Um, and so this is a good way to kind of cut the model up into pieces, but um, so I'm going to accept that. Uh, it, you'll notice if you watch the last video, everything is a lot faster, even down to 400,000 triangles, so much faster than working on a 2 million triangle mesh. Um, that's going to improve in the future, but that's how it is now. Uh, okay, so those were the auto UVs. So that now we could bake from now, but I'm going to show you how to do um, some other UV processes. So we also have this unwrap button. Um, by default, this is going to uh, not do anything. It's This is actually the same UVs we had before. This error message up here says why. It says this mesh has no poly groups. So I showed this in an earlier 4.26 tutorial that you can paint. If you want to do UVs completely manually, you can paint on the surface, paint it into groups, and then solve for UVs by groups. But what we're going to do is change this island mode to existing UVs. So now what it's doing is it's solving on the UV islands that we already have that we computed with auto UV. Um, now it's really bad here in some spots. This method that it's set to now x map is very fast but it's not good on a mesh like this um, it's good on like boxy meshes like low poly boxy meshes this usually you want to use x map if you have especially if you have groups if you have poly groups on a poly model it works pretty well but on a mesh like this we want to switch this to conformal and you see now a lot of these regions are much more the 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 uvs are much more square but there's also uh you know variation in the size there's like we call it distortion or stretching in some areas, but I'm going to accept this. Okay. So now what we need to do basically is we need to, to fix that. What we have to do is cut up, um, those, those regions. So the next tool we're going to use is seam ed. So what this is now you click seam when you start seam ed, you'll see where the UV seams are. Um, and we can see some of the problems here. Uh, like it's trying to, you know, this whole leg is like a tube. Oh, it's got a line here on the back. Uh, so that one's okay. The foot was uh, stretching in a weird way. So what we can do is we can just put in cuts um, by clicking and dragging. So I'm going to just cut up some of this. Basically, sometimes if you do a long line, it doesn't go where you want. It's following the mesh edges. So then you can just do it in pieces. Um, let's see, turn the floor off. So this is a thing you kind of get a hang of like, what is a good shape for a UV region? Uh, we can't erase lines right now. So you can't get rid of these, like this whole base should probably be one patch. You could do that by making it a separate group and running the group UVs, but I'm just going to cut them up like this for now. Um, this whole foot, these foot's feet should probably have a second cut on them. So, and this one over here was distorted before. So let's just put a cut on it. You can have partial cuts. You don't have to close off islands like this, but I'm, that's just my habit. So I, if you accept that now, nothing's changed. So I have to go back to the unwrap. Uh, but you see now the foot is much better. Um, we got rid of the distortion there. So there's some places here, like I can, I feel like I could probably improve this in some areas. 
Um, but that's basically all I'm going to do for now on the on that. Okay, so now we have UVs. We can bake to accept. They are all so this unwrap tool doesn't pack the UVs. It just computes them. They're just in kind of random places in UV space right now. Um, if I go to the static mesh editor and turn on this UV overlay, you see that they're not they're not tiled or laid out or anything. Um, the reason we do that is because the layout um, in some cases can take a while. And if you're doing tiling textures, you don't you probably don't want that layout um, to happen. And so we don't auto layout, you have to run the layout tool. Um, and you see when you do that, you'll get this um, kind of like like temporary view of the layout directly in the viewport here. Uh, you can actually move that around and stuff um, and change it, make it bigger if you feel like it's too small. But you can't do anything in here. You can't click and drag stuff. You can just see the islands. We can see like, for instance, this is a real weird shaped island um, that I probably would, if I was doing this for real, go in and find and cut that up into some smaller pieces. But for now, I don't really care. The only other thing to know is you can change this. If you want more space, uh, you can change this, right? By default, it leaves, I think, two gutter pixels for the given resolution. And so um, if you're going to leave a bigger, you, if you want a bigger gutter for like mip mapping, you might want to set this to kind of low so it leaves more space. Um, and then when we bake, they'll, at a higher resolution, there'll be enough space between them. Um, that's something we'll haven't haven't done yet is add explicit gutter control in here. Okay, so that's a now we've got a layout. I'm going to accept that. Um, okay, so now we're almost ready to bake. There's one more thing is we have to compute tangents uh, for the normal map. So we need tangents on this low poly mesh. You can't do that until after you've done your UVs because the tangents depend on the UVs. So I'm going to run the tangents tool. Um, there's options here. You could you know crank these up and see, I've got to put them pretty high and see the tangents, but it doesn't really matter. Um, you can use the original MCT space, which is something you might, if you've used other tools, uh, that's pretty common. We have a, a faster version of it that works even on high res meshes really quickly. That's um, not quite exactly the same as MCT space, but because we're not importing and exporting, uh, it doesn't really matter. MCT is mostly about transferring between apps. And if you're staying in Unreal, uh, you can use any of the tangent methods and they'll all work equally well. Um, okay, so we computed tangents and it doesn't appear to have done anything, but we definitely did. Okay, so now next thing we're going to do uh, is we're going to bake the texture. So we're going to use um, the bake text tool. So the bake text tool can do all sorts of different bakes. Uh, if I just select the object by itself, normal map won't do anything because it's already there. You can bake ambient occlusion. Um, I mean, that's really low, I guess. Low res ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion takes a bit of time. I probably shouldn't do this in this video. It's kind of fun to play with, though. Um, but we, what we want to do is bake. Oh, actually, no. The first thing we're going to bake. Oh, right. Sorry. We have to make the selection first. Okay. I want to bake the high poly here onto the low poly. Oh, that's why the ambient occlusion didn't do anything. I have to select the high poly. Uh, so what I want to do is select the low poly first and then the high poly and then start the bake text tool. So you see it's baking the normal map. I'm actually going to do, it's really low res right now. If we turn this up, say we did 2K, it's going to look pretty good. Still, it's got some problems. We're going to sort those out after. First thing I'm going to do is bake, or actually let's do the normal map first because then we'll have the settings dialed in. Okay, so the the reason it's only kind of showing up is this thickness parameter. So basically we need to set the thickness. The thickness is how far the base, uh, the base mesh and the high poly can, how far apart they can be. Um, so basically we have to turn this up because we're working in quite a large space here, right? We scaled that thing up by a hundred. So if I set that to 10, uh, you know, there's still these big flat areas. So I don't know, maybe 25. The, you can go, the problem is if you go too high, you can start picking up the wrong projections different areas. Uh, but it, it's still changing like you just maybe saw in there that it flickered. Uh, I think this is about right though. Um, because we did all that voxel type stuff, the, the meshes have gotten quite far apart and so we do have to set that up pretty high and it can lead to some artifacts in some places but it's looking pretty good uh, I think. 
So let's just go with that. Um, so let's set to current folder. It's going to basically output that. Um, now I didn't put it on the model because it just made the, all that was doing was baking a texture. So we need to make a new material now. Uh, so we can put it on. We'll call this final mat. Oh, no, M final. Um, we're just going to drag that texture in here and it'll make a sampler. We wire the RGB up to the normal. Um, and we can apply that and close it. So we can drag that on now. The only problem is it's going to be, um, right, uh, it doesn't have any color yet. Um, if we switch to detail lighting mode, though, that we can see that it actually looks pretty good. Like, you know, in the middle here, you can see it's kind of wobbled in a few spots. Uh, maybe it's actually even hard to tell. Though no, that thing's not perfectly round, so it's actually done a pretty good job of that. Um, so you see, that's a you know pretty good uh, representation of the normals. Um, so now we want to bake. Do that again. We're going to bake the texture. Uh, so I select my uh, sort of low poly, then my high poly. Shift select it, then bake text. And we're going to change this to texture image. And then I'm going to drag this texture. So that made this panel appear. I'm going to drag this texture 2D in there. Now I can't see it because we're in detail lighting. We've got to switch to something else. If we switch to lit. I mean, obviously that's not good. We need more resolution. Let's put that back to 2K again. Um, so here it's not right. We don't now we're showing a when we do the baking, we're showing a preview material that only shows the bake texture. It doesn't show it can't combine this bake texture with the other material. So it doesn't have any normal. So that's why it looks really weird. If we change this to unlit, you see that they look the same. So that's unlit's just it takes the normals out of it, which we already baked separately. So it just shows the color. So you can see um, that we did a pretty solid job on the colors. You see we're cap capturing a lot of the detail. You can see this is where you can kind of see the differences. Um, like if you look in these cracks here, um, the you know because we kind of filled those in we're getting some like incorrect projection in there um you know whether or not that's an issue for you uh you know you might have to if that is a problem you might need to go back and use uh like a smaller offset distance in the in the um, morphology tool uh and then simply spend a bit more time on the simplification um Okay, uh, and the thickness too. So if we, you know, change this back down, you'll start. So with the color bake, you'll get what you'll get is you'll get like black artifacts. Actually, that's a kind of a good way to tell, I guess, um, when you've got the thickness kind of dialed in properly is when those black spots disappear. Yeah, let's see, there's still some in there. Um, but let's go with this. Okay, so I'm gonna click accept again. So now I'm in unlit because it has no color. So I'm going to open my final texture again. I'm going to drag my new texture in there, wire it up to base color, click apply. And uh, we change this back to lit. And there we are. So that is a low poly, 5000 triangle low poly. Um, let's just go and drag in the other one that I did earlier that I started with. It's small, I have to make it, oh, that's too big. I did it at a different scale the first time. Uh, reset, oh shoot, I didn't do it at a different scale. So this is two and a, um, these are both 2K maps. Uh, this one here is 2,500 triangles and this one is, um, 5,000 triangles. So you can see the 5,000 triangle one's got some more detail like up here on the neck, uh, over here on the arm. Um, you know, if you were good at, oh, that's something I forgot to show. Um, you can, uh, we do have a tool. If you want to go in and like tweak individual triangles, um, you have the try edit tool, which will let you go in and like select edges and vertices. Um, you know, if you wanted to do some little tweaks, uh, maybe before baking, individual triangle tweaks, uh, you can flip edges and things like that. Um, 
you know, that can be can be good to do. Uh, forgot to mention that. But anyway, so there we are. That's basically the end of this video. So we've now baked down to, I mean, 2K maps are reasonably large. You might get away with a 1K map. Um, that's something you can experiment with. Um, but basically we turned our 2 million high poly into a 5K low poly, you know, uh, in directly in the engine uh, using in editor tools. Um, yeah. And so that's the end of this tutorial. And uh, if you have questions about this kind of workflow or, uh, you know, there's steps you can't figure out how to do, please leave comments uh, and I will be happy to answer. Uh, and uh, maybe we'll do some follow-up videos cleaning up other scans like this uh, if, if there's interest in that. All right. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, check out Unreal Engine 5.0 Early Access. Check out Modeling Mode. Uh, once you've done all this stuff, you can go back and turn on Nanite and Lumen and use your cleaned up scans to make crazy amazing uh, levels uh, with all our new rendering technologies. Okay, thanks for watching.